Hello everyone, welcome to myself, Max McGillivray from Beanstalk Global. Uh, we've just been having a great catch up with, uh, with everyone and we've been, uh, Liz has told us not to talk about hair because there's, <laughs> cause there's a big, big problem of uh, lack of hairdressers. And uh, uh, is, Liz, is that right? And other things within, within South Africa currently? No, I'll she promised... get you back for that one, Max. I'll get no. you back for that one. No, no problem. <laughs> so, so what... <laughs> Thank you. So welcome to this uh, this webinar. I've been really excited about this uh, setting up this webinar for the for the last week for reasons that I'll I'll look to explain to you. Um, Beanstalk Global. If, if you haven't come across us before, we are a social enterprise that we have created that supports, educates, and promotes the global fresh food industry to help it thrive and grow faster. Um, our view is is that um, especially with everything that is going on, businesses need to come together, and in some respects, under a social enterprise uh, banner in certain areas to help. A, a business or a product area um, be promoted and to be more, even more successful. And this is especially so with, with fresh produce. All of these people, these amazing experts that we've got on this webinar, know the beauty and the benefits of consuming fresh produce. And that's one of the reasons why we look to set up um, Beanstalk.global. Uh, so what we're gonna do with this webinar, which is all centered around South Africa, is we're gonna find out the view from these five experts as to what is going on in that fair, fair country, whilst I'm stood here in, uh, in England. Um, we, we know what's going on within our own countries, especially within the UK and Europe. We're really interested, really intrigued to see what the view is, is, is from South Africa. So hopefully we can learn as well. So what we're gonna do um, just initially is just run around everyone so they can introduce themselves and who they represent and also where, where they're sat. Um, and then we're going to just go into 40, 50 minutes of um, um, open conversation and, and dialogue um, with questions coming in from you, the, the viewers. We, we couldn't be uh, running this if it wasn't f without to your participation. So please get involved and use the question uh, system at the bottom of the, of the screen that, uh, that you see. And before we get going, we must just say thank you very much to our sponsors. Um, our partner sponsors, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be in the position to now be on our, I think it's our 16th um, webinar um, on this international basis. So just to thank very much Westphalia Fruit and Green Cell, some of the best avocado growers and marketeers in the country. Red Fox, one of the best executive recruitment companies in the fresh food sectors globally. Blue Skies, amazing business, UK based, but with sites in uh, Ghana, Benin, Egypt, South Africa and Brazil. Uh, Kantar, Kantar World Panel. I, I think um, uh, Leanne's going to help us with a bit of information from Kantar a little bit later. Uh, G's, UK based, but they've got sites in the likes of Senegal, uh, Poland, and also um, America. Vida Fresh, one of the fastest growing produce companies in the, in the UK, mainly sourcing tropical product out of um, South America. Terry, perhaps we should be doing a, a, a webinar on, uh, on South America and employing lots of the Brazilians to come on to, uh, to talk to us. And last but lot, not least, um, AC Gotems, one of the best top fruit growers in the, in the UK. Um, and just before we get going, just to say our next webinar is, uh, is going to be, uh, next week is going to be very interesting in that we partnered up with the British Apples and Pears Group to host their conference online using the Beanstalk um, uh, platform so that they can get an even better reach in these uh, rather extraordinary times. So guys, let's get to it. Let's find out about um, South Africa. So let's find out uh, a little bit about all, all of our guests. Um, Liz, I, I, I wrongly picked on you earlier. So come on, you can pick on me now. Who, who are you? Where are you, please? Um, hi, I'm, I'm Liz Van Niekerk. I'm sat here in the beautiful Cape Town today. Um, uh, I am in the pick and pay offices because I didn't think you would appreciate um, four dogs and two kids running around in the background. Um, and I'm the general manager of Produce and Horsey here at Pick and Pay. Fantastic. Thank you, Liz. Uh, Leanne. Okay, super. Hi, I'm Leanne Jones. I'm based today in Johannesburg. It's lovely and sunny and we've got beautiful autumn weather. Um, a little bit of my, my work experience. I've worked in sales and marketing in Europe, Latin America, um, Israel and Africa. And I've worked for brands such as Zespri, Chili and Fresh Fruit. Um, and today I'm joining Beanstalk Global in my own capacity to share some info. Fantastic. And Justin, just, Justin ensures us that he's not actually stood on top of a tractor um, over this, that, that beautiful background uh, that he's got. Justin, who are you? Where are you, please? Thanks, Max. And thanks for this opportunity. I'm always amazed at technology that we can speak to people all over the world from our office. Um, I'm just outside Durban uh, in, in South Africa. Um, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Citrus Growers Association of Southern Africa. We represent citrus farmers in South Africa, uh, Iswatini, which used to be Swaziland and Zimbabwe. Excellent. And is it uh, true that you're still a professional mountain biker, if not the best mountain biker in South Africa? 
Uh, when I stay on my bike, uh, which is a rare occur occurrence, I, I'm, I'm fairly good, but I spend a lot of time on the ground. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Anton, please tell us who you are, where you are. Thanks, Max. Um, Anton Kruger. I'm the CEO of the Fresh Produce Exporters Forum. We represent about 93% of all the fresh produce export volume from South Africa. And we always say we'll never be 100% because we do not allow everybody to become a member. We are a voluntary-based membership organization, and we've got very strict uh, criteria and a code of conduct that our members must sign. I'm also based in Cape Town, a small coastal village, about 30 days out of Cape Town on the west coast, next to our only nuclear power plant. Um, so it's quite safe where I am. I think everything is just very neatly controlled, and uh, we won't have a lot of problems, I think, around here. So, and, and Anton, I think this is the first time I've, I've met you when you haven't had a, a microphone in your hand and you've been be, been presenting uh, somewhere like the uh, uh, the fruit that just occurred on the on the uh, on the South African stand with a big announcement, and it's some somehow it's normally co connected with Justin with with what Justin's up to. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> and, and Clayton, he's our rock star, as we, as we were saying on the warm up, especially with the, some of the positive, positive publicity that's just come out, of, out about his group this morning. Clayton, who are you, please? Hi, I'm Clayton, and I am from uh, Cape Town, Cape Flats of Cape Town, but currently uh, working for the South African table grape industry, or SATI in short, representing all table grape growers across South Africa. Um, currently, uh, I'm in the office uh, in Paul. And we're so delighted that uh, our industry, obviously the fresh fruit industry, uh, have been declared essential services. And uh, yeah, we are all shouldering uh, on, on the wheel and just uh, putting up amazing fresh produce on the tables of the world. Fantastic. And I, I owe a, a great gratitude to, to a number of these people, especially Clayton. Um, in that, th Clayton, can you remember, was it three, four years ago, I, I went to yeah. this uh, odyssey of riding a motorbike from London to Cape Town to educate, excite people about uh, where fresh produce uh, comes from. And when we put the message out that we were on this mad adventure, uh, Clayton was one of the very first people to contact us to say, we, um, uh, FSA, Fruit South Africa, would love to get, uh, get involved. And, and Clayton, Justin, what, uh, Anton, what a journey we had when we came into, uh, into South Africa, especially with all the help of um, uh, Justin's uh, esteemed colleague, um, Gloria, who bossed us all around uh, logistically wise. And, and, and if it wasn't for those sort of contacts, we wouldn't have had the success of that trip, which is actually built onto um, how Beanstalk was, um, was formed. So, so guys, no, normally at this, this point, I would uh, go into my State of the Union as to the particular subject, but I think we're, we're, we've only got a limited uh, time here. So I just want to get in, into it. And if it's okay, Leanne, very, very kindly, uh, look to do a, a, bit of a, a bit of a report, a bit, bit of a, um, a, a presentation as to where she th sees things on a South African fresh produce perspective. So Leanne, if that's okay, can we start off with, the, with you, please? Yeah, super. So um, just leading up to this, this webinar, I spoke to a couple of um, different companies in, in South Africa, Cantar being one, also um, uh, the largest retailer in Africa, which will be your ShopRite Checkers um, group. I also have spoken to some importers and packers for retailers and also a market agent, just to get a, a little bit of an overview or a macro view of the trends that we're seeing during this, this COVID time. Um, because a lot of the the, the feedback that we're receiving is that people want to understand what's happening so they can better prepare their business for, for post-COVID or, or post-lockdown, as we call it. So I'll sort of start on some of the macro trends. Um, and this has come from a Cantar panel research that they do um, every fortnight across 50 countries and 45,000 um, consumers. And if we're looking at them, one of the macro trends is that Everyone globally has a, a renewed respect for essentials. Our basic needs that were once taken for granted are now considered treasures. And that's food, safety, and family. So if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that's your physiological um, well-being as well as your safety. And if we drill down a little bit more into some numbers in South Africa, 53% of all South African households believe that their income is going to be affected going forward. And that's sort of more your influential households. And so in South Africa, where we have a, a high inequality and a high level of poverty, that's going to affect our lower income um, and those in tighter economic conditions significantly more. 
and 53% is, is a big number um, to be financially inf um, affected. 82% of South Africans are anxious and concerned about the current situation. Um, their financial health is their biggest worry, followed by their physical health. Um, we are also seeing that 73% of shoppers are choosing to shop nearer to home, which obviously has an impact on their, their pre-established shopping patterns. You know, that is changing and the retailers they're choosing to shop at has changed. 63% of South African shoppers are aiming to choose the same brand in the store. Um, someone they trust and that, that repetition and that reliability. And we're also now seeing um, much more of a move to, let's call it local as LACA. For, for those not um, in South Africa, LACA is a, a slang for, for nice and it, it's really cool. And so we're seeing that, that consumers are choosing to buy local over imported. And so when we start drilling down now, um, talking to the suppliers and to the big retailer chains, um, we're seeing there is quite a significant shift in buying patterns. Um, one of the large packer into the, the likes of Spa, Checkers, Woolworths and Pick and Pay have seen between a 30 and 50% decline in sales of premium fruit. That, that will be grapes, stone fruit, kiwi figs those type of, of more sort of premium fruit products. And then when you sort of look at the independent distributors or the suppliers into the food service or the smaller, what I call independent retailers, you're actually seeing a decrease of 80 to 90% of more premium fruit products going into that channel. Converse to that, we see a huge increase in citrus. Citrus is really booming. Um, one of the retailers in South Africa in their first week after lockdown so a 200% increase in sales of citrus versus the same week in 2019. Um, and the growth is actually coming um, from oranges, lemons, and grapefruit. Um, and the, the perception or, or what they're seeing in sales going into the, the retailers is that soft citrus has a slower growth. Um, part of the, the challenge that we have in South Africa is that our hospitality industry has been closed and op only opened last week. And I think as a country, we underestimated the level of fresh produce that goes into the hospitality industry. Um, the other challenge that we're seeing is that our borders are closed over border. So a lot of our, our fruit cannot be exported over border easily into the surrounding countries. Um, if we start looking at, at our large markets in South Africa, I just um, received East the market for a month um, from April 2019 to April 2020. If you compare the month, the markets overall were down 6% in value and 9% in volume. So our fresh produce markets are also taking a big hit. Um, and we, we also see that even followed through to like a staple product such as potatoes, um, since lockdown has declined around 8% in volume. If you're starting to look at supply into to Africa, um, a lot of our African countries are having challenges, um, particularly with the oil price and the devalue of their currency. Um, but there has been a huge switch more so into those markets and what is called essentials. Um, so mainly um, the supplies in rice, maize, potatoes, or your actually veg, have dropped off significantly in terms of demand. Um, and the only type of other fresh um, vegetables that are being required are tomatoes, onions, and leafy veg, such as a cabbage or spinach to make a relish. Um, and um, lemons and ginger are in such supply, no one can get enough of that going into Africa. So those are the sort of trends that we're seeing um, in the produce um, market going into retailer. One of the and things um, that are also coming through is, is one of the main packers for spa, which, as you know, um, has a, a sort of much more of a franchised um, retail base and stores are able to buy from um, head office or through the markets. Those stores are, are starting to choose more to move through the, the centralized buying just because it's more difficult for them to buy from the markets 
you need a lot of permits and accessibility and also the logistical systems in South Africa are quite challenging to move project, project, produce around unless you have the, um, the correct permits. Um, we also seeing that consumers are potentially preferring to move to smaller store formats, which is um, what SPA has, because they feel they're a little bit safer in that shopping environment. Um, the other areas that um, we're also seeing is we have a ban on alcohol and tobacco, which is very, very, very hot and discussed topic in South Africa. I think everyone's feed on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn is, you know, you know, up in arms, why we can't smoke and why we can't drink. Um, but one of the, the trends we're seeing is that we believe some of the money is moving from, from those items into spending on, on fresh produce. Um, the other big challenges we're seeing in the, the trends is because the borders are closed, quite a lot of smaller companies who supply over border are having to make new plans on how to get their, their, their produce into Zambia, into Mozambique, into Zimbabwe. So they're sort of collaborating quite a lot more with maybe sort of bigger pack houses or different organizations who have all the permits and, and the transport already set up to do that. Um, so there's quite a lot of moving and, and changing within our supply base in just really getting produce um, to, to consumers through the different channels. Leanne, We've also sorry, Leanne, keep going. Okay, um, we've also seen an incredible um, response from the retailers in South Africa. In, in my personal opinion, I, I believe Pick and Pay and, and Checkers have been the most agile to respond um, to changes and particularly with their omni-channel. Um, Pick and Pay have partnered with, with Bottle um, to deliver and, and Checkers have been actually quite um, interesting in a way that they've actually gone above and beyond to give bonuses to their, their staff for working on the front line. So I think um, these retailers, besides being incredibly agile in being able to supply channels um, such as drive through WhatsApp shopping, personal shopping service, are also looking through the whole value chain, looking after their staff and also very, very strongly providing some feeding program for um, a lot of people in South Africa who are very, very much on the bread line and finding it hard to, to get food. Leanne, that's, that's fascinating. Thank you. And if anyone's got any specific questions for Leanne as we're talking, please uh, fire them over. And it, it, it does seem that, um, although the, the numbers are different, there does seem to be a fair few similarities in the, in the UK and Europe in the respect of the situation that we're going through and, and, and the uh, the, the, the changes that we're all having to go through. Um, Anton, what's your view, please, from a, from a, from a grower perspective of your membership? Uh, thank you, Max. Maybe just a broad uh, perspective, firstly, that South Africa exports about 3.1 million tons of fresh fruit per year. And we're talking about fresh, not processed fruit, to about 100 countries. Um, and South Africa is a big exporter of fresh fruit in the Southern Hemisphere by volume and the second biggest exporter of citrus in the world. Um, just that perspective. So South Africa is a, a fairly big role player uh, in the industry. And I think if you look at what's now happening in, in the COVID-19 situation, as uh, Clayton has alluded to, we have an essential service right from the start, for which we are um, thankful. And we, the challenges that we are experiencing um, have been and some of them being resolved and the process of being resolved. Firstly, the ports, I think Lan also touched on that. Um, we have four primary ports for the export of fresh produce. Initially, they reduced their capacity to about 30% in terms of staff and equipment. Um, we've engaged on that and that's been now some back to 60% and some still on the way there and others said they were aiming for 80%. But then we had in the port of Cape Town over the weekend, one staff member testing positive. It will close down of the container terminal and all the processes to get it up and running again. Um, but so th that remains a constant challenge for us with, with the ports. Um, the second one was the availability of empty containers, refrigerated containers. But the shipping lines did the utmost um, to alleviate that problem. Uh, some containers already arrived. South Africa, and it seems that the 
problem will be sorted out by this Friday, the 15th of May, that we will have an adequate number of empty containers to use. Um, look at the, some cost increases I also re, um, refer to, um, especially when you export to some of these markets, um, that suddenly South African fruit arrives there and fruit from other countries, and then there's a congestion in those ports of the receiving countries, um, leading to a backlog, um, leading to logistics challenges in those countries, a lot of stock uh, in cold rooms, not enough capacity. And then some of our members need to take a decision either to dump the fruit, that's not a good thing to do, or to return the container with the fruit, or to do a transshipment. But all of that comes with cost. With the COVID-19 now, the exchange rate, the South African rand is now close to about 20 rand to, to the euro. So that's got a, a huge impact. Um, if you look again at some countries now, uh, Sri Lanka has in, suddenly um, implemented or announced high import duties and tariffs that were not there previously. Uh, we face with that now. To, so you started planning on a, a zero tariff, and then suddenly your food arrives there after three weeks on the water, you faced with that. <laughs> the nation that Leanne in, in, um, alluded to as well, um, initially we had a big problem when all the courier services were seized, they were preventing from operating. And countries, importing countries, uh, insisted on the original documentation. We couldn't get it there because there are no flights. Uh, some cargo flights now from South Africa, but no passenger flights. Um, so to get the documents, even from the export or the, or the producer down to the ports, everything was a big challenge. Um, because of the, the um, lack of courier services, went the whole process. Um, countries now accepting uh, electronic copies, especially of the phytosanitary certificates. Um, so that was a challenge gradually, but I think we got there that most of the countries now accept that. Um, the road transport, yes, especially cross-border into southern Africa, that is still a problem, to, especially, especially to get trucks from the other countries to come and fetch some fresh produce from the South African markets and take it across there. Um, that is a challenge. Um, also with the transport for us um, on the producer side, I think Justin, maybe and Clayton can talk more about that, but the seasonal workers uh, between the provinces the need to move between the provinces. And then um, I've touched on that, but the payments becoming an issue for quite a number of our members in the other countries. Dan also said in South Africa, the hospitality industry is closed, but that is the, the case in most of the countries where we export it. Um, so that led to a decrease um, in the fruit consumption in those countries. Uh, some countries, the retailers were closed, some the wet markets were closed, some still are. Um, whether some of them reopened or they are open or they remain open, um, the consumers in those countries, because they've been in lockdown, they didn't have enough income, they don't have the purchasing power. They can't buy um, the fresh produce or the volumes that they used to buy and to consume. So your retailer or your wholesaler would have the, the stock imported from South Africa, but cannot sell it or cannot sell it at the price um, that was initially thought that it, it can reach. So that leads to a fake payment problem. And then the banking systems in some countries we've seen also um, disrupted, um, leading to problems with receiving the payment uh, from those countries for our members. Um, and I think just leading on to one other thing that Leanne also said, and that is the, the retailers with the feeding programs. And I think from our industry side, especially other producers as well, big programs that we see to ensure fresh produce um, being donated to feeding schemes to vulnerable people in the vulnerable communities. And I think just, just confirms the, the beauty of this industry. So yeah, despite all the challenges, um, we are moving along and we've got access to our government on a regular basis to raise our concerns um, and to see how we can jointly uh, address some of these challenges. Uh, Anton, thank you. Just well, one slightly naive question from, from myself. In the UK, a, a company, if it wants to deal with another company, it, it looks to get credit insurance on it. 
Uh, so we, we have a number of students um, listening into this. So just explain that so that uh, if a company wants to deal with another company, they'll make sure there's credit insurance. And God forbid, if that um, a company they're buying from uh, has, a, has a problem, uh, go, goes bust, uh, the uh, company can claim on the credit insurance to get any about 90, 95 percent of the of the uh, money that is owed. When you as a, as a country or as individual growers are dealing with um, overseas um, customers or countries. Is there any form of credit insurance that can be that that can be gained? Uh, Max, yes, in some countries, uh, not in all the countries. It's not available in all countries. Some countries you avail you um, able to get credit insurance. You could deal with a retailer, but not with a wholesaler. So it depends. Um, we also have in government in our Department of Trade, Industry, and Competition a unit, the ECIC. Uh, Export Credit Insurance uh, Corporation uh, that can assist in some instances, but you do have the other private credit insurance companies. But as I've said, that is not available um, all over the world. Okay, Anton, thank you. Uh, Justin, Citrus, with, with the other 14, 15, 16 webinars that, uh, that we've done previously on Beanstalk, um, it's always come around to, to, to Citrus. Uh, that citrus is such a good product because of its uh, longer shelf life in comparison to say something like sorry Clayton grapes so presumably if, uh, if your your members your growers can pick the citrus and, and can get it away uh, you and your your members are in a good spot yeah um max everybody seems to to think that um i must say we are a bit nervous about the season and I, i'd rather be sitting where clayton is and have my season finished than going into the season and the reason is because so much is unknown, you know, it's like going into a dark room and not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, for sure, we've got a, a very good crop on the trees. And for sure, if we can get it to the consumer, it sounds like the consumer wants to buy the product. But it's, it's, it's those steps in the logistics chain that we're most worried about. Um, so, uh, you know, um, Anton's mentioned the logistics. Uh, we've got a COVID-19 response committee at CGA and, and our highest uh, risk that we've identified is the ports. Uh, because um, the, the medical experts tell us that 60% of us are going to get ill. So four of us on this webinar are going to get COVID. Um, and if you think about it, uh, you know, you've got a lot of workers coming into central places uh, around the industry, for example, onto farms to harvest the fruit, into pack houses to pack the fruit, and then at the port and the, uh, the cold stores. And if one worker gets ill, different uh, entities have different responses to that. Um, as Anton mentioned, on Sunday for 12 hours, the Cape Town port stopped because of uh, five workers that had gone down with the or tested positive. And that's a huge risk for us. You know, if, if a port stops just for an hour, you have a massive backlog. Um, and if it closes for 12 hours, you have vessels standing outside for, for ages and you, and you just simply find it very difficult to catch up. So yes, um, we're very positive in terms of, of, of the product that we're dealing with. Um, given that most people believe that uh, um, vitamin C is a remedy for colds and flu and therefore citrus is a good product. Interesting enough, we actually had a discussion with the Chinese um, on a Zoom call um, uh, earlier in the week. And they said to us that they, in, in China and in lots of Asia, um, citrus is not, or vitamin C is not seen as a remedy for, for colds and flu. And in fact, a doctor there told them to drink more milk and eat more meat. So, um, you know, the, it, us in the Western world, you know, that is, as a, um, a remedy, but, but it's not actually the case in Asia. So different markets are being affected in different ways. Uh, definitely in Europe, it looks like a very uh, buoyant market and market that will absorb a lot of fruit. But um, Asia is looking a bit, uh, a bit risky uh, in terms of, of the volumes that might move through there. And to mention the wet markets that are, that are, are, are um, working under difficulty. Hospitality trade, you know, which takes a lot of lemons. Um, uh, you know, we worried about the fact that that, that demand might fall as well. So we're cautiously optimistic. But we do understand that there could be, there could be issues uh, going into the season. Okay, so you feel you're slightly in a dark room, but hopefully you can find the, uh, the, the door handle and there'll be light at the, at the end of the room. We hope so, yeah. 
It's, it's a quite idiot. As um, Justin eloquently put it, you've come to the end of your season on, on grapes, just for the, the uninitiated. And I keep on referring back to the students that are watch, watching this um, because we're, we're just coming to our summer. So we, we don't understand. How, how come you come to the end of your season there? Grapes, what, how's that all? So just, can you just give a, a pricey of, uh, of the grape season within, within South Africa, especially the press releases that have uh, just come out this morning about the just shy of a record crop? Yeah, certainly. Uh, the South African table grape season runs from about October to about uh, beginning of May uh, each year. And we, uh, during April, we finished the last two weeks or so of harvesting. And uh, obviously, we, the last, uh, very last shipment of table grapes will still go through to uh, world markets that they will receive from South Africa. But by and large, the bulk of our just over 66 million, 4.5 kg cartons of table grapes have been shipped but uh, the, the focus again for us is uh, we've definitely um, looked at the, the practices and the rigor within the agricultural environment where there is a continuous focus on food safety quality traceability uh, we've just recovered you know from a drought uh, two years ago so you know sanitizing hand washing uh, those are all critical factors you know for where we have a large um, gathering of employees in pack houses, pack stores, and, and, and other parts of the farm. So for us, um, COVID-19 in essence is, is enhancing and improving on those practices that currently exist. And um, taking that forward, obviously, with a, with a forward view, uh, you know, quality focus remains the world markets. Obviously, you have to ship the best quality fruit from the trees. And uh, the large, po my largest portion of our table grape harvest is exported. Um, and so with that as well, we see huge investments in, in new varieties, new cultivars that, that requires, you know, a, a increase or decreasing amount of manual physical labor, uh, not in its essence machinery, but we see a focus to employing the labor to more high value adding activities on the farm. And, you know, all of that coupled together, we've got what it's called the Sustainability Initiative of South Africa, CESA, which has to do with environmental sustainability practice, uh, ethical practices of treating employees, you know, farm employees uh, uh, more fairly, as well as obviously sharing the proceeds of, of the farm. And in, in, and in South Africa, we see particularly where the um, fresh produce industry contributes to job creation, rural development, earning of foreign currency. So those are all factors that within this uh, you know, COVID-19 environment are all critical factors that, are, that need to be managed uh, quite carefully together with our partners, Anton and the fresh produce exporters, as well as the, the, the local supermarkets and so on. Clayton, thank you. Thank you. Um, and Liz, I've, I've purposely left you to last because you've got the, such a unique background, um, having been working in the retail side within the UK, uh, now working in the retail side of South Africa, family in the UK, family in South Africa. I, I suppose we need to start with yourself in the respect of your, your, your day job, um, in respect to pick a pay. What, what are you seeing on the ground um, in the respect of the, the situation we're in? Well, it's certainly been an interesting time. <laughs> um, I think in all of the years in retail, both in the UK and, and here, um, I can say it's, it's been a very unique three months. Um, we use a military term, adapt and overcome. Um, and, and recently that's been a daily uh, occurrence. Um, it, it really has been wild. Um, you know, first of all, we started with kind of the pre-lockdown period and and the panic buying, um, and, and that was kind of really unplanned, um, crazy times, just trying to you know, understand what on earth is going on while you're also um, coming to terms with the fact that you're in a lockdown yourself. Uh, very, very quickly understanding what a new customer demand looks like. Um, and then overnight you were in lockdown, um, and stage five lockdown in South Africa was very strict. Um, there was a lot of fear in the first couple of, of weeks around army and, and police um, and, and, and controlling roadblocks and the like. Um, and so kind of movement of customers um, was a real, a real shift. Um, we saw people kind of moving away from malls where you might have previously gone to a waterfront in Cape Town, for example, um, sales dramatically down and then people really buying into smaller local stores. Um, so really coming to grips in those first few days of, of, of stage five was huge. 
Um, and, and, and then from there, it, it really from our side, once you've learned that and you say, okay, we think we've got a new norm now. Um, I think that the, the realization started to hit um, perhaps slightly sooner than in the UK that the economic impacts of this um, were going to be huge. Um, and so certainly for the last three weeks, um, our mind has been very much, you know, what does, what does retail look like in six months time? What does the economy look like in six months time? And where is the pick and pay customer at? Um, we are a mass market retailer, so we serve all, diff all different demographics. Um, and so while we're dealing with the change in demand in general, you've then got the nuances at the different demographic level, which has been quite stark. Um, and so, you know, for the, for the, really the last two weeks, um, we've been looking in detail around a little bit further out, you know, what happens in six months time um, and where does the demand sit then? Um, the, the beautiful thing uh, that, that, we've, uh, that we've gone to is, you know, as long as you put the customer first and you really understand where the customer is at, um, we are actually in a fortunate position that we do, we are still trading. Um, sales are strong um, and where we are able to adapt, where we are able to quickly understand what those shifts were, capitalize on that, it's, it's been good for us. Um, the flip side of that is it's quite difficult to be, you know, building and making these decisions with large groups of people involved when you are basically on Zoom all day. Um, and so uh, that aligning large groups of people to what is ultimately a new goal um, has been a challenge. Um, and it's been incredible just to see how technology can, can play a role there, really. Um, you know, we've, we've managed to keep a pretty large business going, um, all of us at home on, on Zoom. Um, and it's, you know, that's been really incredible. I wouldn't say it's been easy, um, but, but definitely exciting. Um, and, and, and the customer demand has changed dramatically. Um, we've really seen, as Leanne said, big shifts in, in, in eating um, habits. Lots of people are cooking at home. Um, we, do, we do have an alcohol ban, so there's been a very interesting increase in demand of things like pineapple. I'm not sure why. Um, apparently some people are, are making beer from it. Um, and, but, but, but daily the shifts have changed. Um, and even more recently we went to, to level four. Um, and so people can buy clothing again. And then we saw the mall stores now picking up. Um, so every day is different. Um, we start every morning with an early um, team call um, where we basically just look at the numbers and, and we learn what's new. Um, and, and that's been basically how we've run the business. You know, what happened yesterday and what does it mean for tomorrow? Um, which is really um, interesting times. But very positive, um, very positive for produce. Um, certainly with the pick and pay customer, very positive in terms of the South African produce. 90-95% um, of what we sell is procured locally and I'm not sure many countries can say that. Certainly when I worked in the UK it was kind of the other way around. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, that's really key. Um, there was a, a gif or a meme going around, you know, overnight, suddenly you don't need Hollywood superstars um, and, and, and football players. Uh, you just need farmers. Um, and, you know, I was kind of saying, yeah, yeah I've said that for years. Um, so, so definitely, um, as proud South Africans, as South Africans are, um, a real appreciation for the farmers of South Africa. Um, and, and also for retailers and, and what retailers do. Um, so whilst business is, is good, um, fast paced and, and exciting, um, we've also been able to make a real difference out there um, in South Africa. Um, we have Mrs. Susan Ackerman that works for us that calls herself the CEO, the Chief Emotional Officer. <laughs> Um, and she's been really driving um, uh, uh, the food parcels and, and the, where the real need is. Um, you know, in the UK, price is really important because it is so competitive. And there's always this kind of Aldi and little and the threat on price for the big four. Um, in South Africa, price isn't a competition thing. It's a, it's a need. People don't have money and they need to eat. Um, and, and so the food parcels and all of the work that we've been doing um, on that side is and are equally as important as the money going through the till. Um, so, so, but so, so, 
Liz, can I just ask some direct questions in comparison to UK retail, just to see whether there's um, any similarities or, or com complete disruption? So the, the likes of a, of, of a big uh, Tesco's um, store within the UK will hold upwards of 35,000 different lines. And when we went through our panic buying, that, that got slimmed down, as you can imagine. And there's, there's now talk that uh, those retailers especially as, as, the, as the UK goes through, the, goes through its uh, economic financial crunch, that people will only want to buy the staple goods. Um, and so those retailers are looking to slim down that 35,000 dramatically. Um, do you think the same will happen with, your, with yourself in South Africa? Absolutely. So some of it was not out of choice. So we weren't able to trade large portions of the GMD offer or clothing offer. We've spoken about liquor and tobacco. So a lot of it was regulated. Um, it's a little bit more opened up now, although there are still some quite odd restrictions. Um, and, and I think initially when the first lockdown came, um, when you're dealing with such uncertainty in terms of demand in a short shelf life, high waste risk category, um, our first move was of course to reduce um, the amount of complexity and increase simplicity to reduce the waste risk. Um, so pretty much overnight, we closed down about 30% of the range, um, just so that the planners can manage, you know, a, mu a much lower risk. Um, like I've said, we do, we work across different demographics. So there is a lot of complexity just from that. Um, it was to reduce that so that we can handle, you know, there's only so much you can take, we could handle what we had. Um, we haven't introduced those ranges back, we're still running a very tight range. Um, and a lot of the conversations we're having now are, you know, is that forever? Um, a lot of a lot of people are at home, so the need for convenience meals or pre-made products is null and void. We're all cooking. We've realised that we can cook, and we don't, you know, don't poison people in doing that. And of course, it's a lot cheaper to do that. Um, and so, uh, real shifts in terms of demand that we're foreseeing could potentially be the case for uh, even the next twelve months. Okay. Certainly, pressure comes on 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 people's salaries and. Uh, we have whole industries that have just stopped um, the, 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 the return on, on a shop in terms of value is, is key. So. And, and uh, delivery, online delivery within the UK, it is uh, uh, expected that we're going to see a 30 percent, three zero percent rise of uh, online deliveries. And the village I live in, I can I can guess that um, out of every five vehicles that go go by, two or three of them will be supermarket delivery uh, vans. Do you have the same within within South Africa? Do you have the, the same availability for online delivery? Uh, we're way behind the UK on that. Um, I mean, when I was still there, which is going back quite a lot of years ago, we set up the flower delivery business. Um, we're still in the infancy on that here. So we're a long way behind the UK. Um, online in South Africa is really a, a lot more difficult than in the UK just because of the sheer size of our country. Um, and so it is really difficult to service um, every household in South Africa because it's a big country and we're spread apart. Um, what, what's been really good, and, and you know, this is the, the beauty of a never waste a crisis, um, is that some of the, the those projects that you always want to do that you never get around to, like you know delivery services, um, suddenly came to the fold. Um, and I think South Africans are very resourceful. Um, we have a swimwear company in Western Cape selling produce at the moment because uh, they were unable to sell swimwear. So all of these businesses popped up, uh, most of them informal, um, and then the big retailers like a pick and pay then also said, okay, quick, what can we do? Um, there is an app um, that, that previously delivered alcohol um, in the big centers in South Africa called Bottles that we partnered with that then could deliver um, deliveries um, in also in the big centers. And that's an interesting model, a little bit like Uber, um, where the app just acts as a facilitator to phone a, a, a driver in, a, in an area. That driver goes and does your shopping for you and then delivers it. Um, so quite an innovative model. Um, uh, are we anywhere near the UK? No. Um, uh, you know, I, I still do an awful lot of UK online shopping and my mum knows when I'm coming back to the UK because Amazon parcels start arriving in bulk. Um, so we're nowhere, we're nowhere there. Um, but the speed at which we've been able to pull together some of the, the offers that we've got now has been incredible. Vicky bought a market plan, um, but definitely trying. I mean, we had South African Mother's Day on Sunday. Uh, we didn't know if we could trade flowers the previous week 
Um, and then we quickly worked with bottles to put an offer together so that you could order. Um, and so we were able to kind of um, put, a, put together a, a plants offer so that people could order for their mums that maybe not don't live in the area that they live in. Um, so we, it's part of the uh, the adapt and overcome. Um, but online, definitely a big opportunity for us, and we're not where we need to be yet. Wow, Liz, thank you. And I, th I think you think you might have just come up with the line of a uh, the line of the webinar. Never waste the crisis. Thank you, <laughs> uh, uh, Clayton. Just throwing, throwing something over, over to you that uh, Walter's yeah. just just come in in with uh, that we've seen within the UK that when we went through our panic buying stages within fresh produce, people did not want to buy loose fresh produce because they thought it it was contaminated. They thought it was the devil. They they wanted plastic wrapped. Um, do you see see that as a benefit um, in the in the respect of grapes? Because within most of Europe, the grapes that we receive from the likes of South Africa are are um, in little plastic punnets. What's your view of that, please? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's usually quite interesting because obviously in times now there's been a quite a big pushback against plastics and now obviously now people want plastics again, so it's a big shift. But, uh, <laughs> but, but we, we, we pride ourselves that we, we're able to deliver what the customer wants and obviously South Africa being a, a, a supplier in terms of the UK, uh, Europe and UK retail, we were able to change lines quite quickly. Um, we foresee that obviously the, the, the trend is from the health and safety concerns, but we just got to communicate the WHO guidelines. You know, food is not a, a, a carrier of, of, of COVID-19, not you know, and all of those things. So we, we trust the, the ongoing communication will, will help clear up some of those um, inconsistencies that consumers might uh, have. Yeah. And, and Justin, I suppose you're you're at an advantage because your product is already wrapped. Um, or, or, or do you not see that as a, or do, do, you, do you share the same same concerns, same same thoughts as uh, as Clayton? Yeah, no, obviously I think the most important thing is, is to let consumers know that there's no danger with food and fruit and fresh produce. You know, I don't think we need to try and say one, one is safer than the other because the, the big thing is to educate consumers that that there's no ways they're going to catch uh, COVID by, by, um, from fruit or by fresh produce. Um, but yeah, it's an advantage that people don't eat the pill and, and, and uh, well, most people don't. In fact, we did a survey and we found some people do, um, but most people don't eat the pill. And, and so it is, uh, it is wrapped up in its own little um, plastic in a way. And, and um, Anton, on, on the basis of never waste a crisis, there's, there's always an issue that I've spoken to, to Justin and Clayton about for, for years now, that you look at the fundamental problem of fresh produce, that we don't gain the, the income um, in respect of creating big marketing campaigns, unlike the likes of, say, the, the Red Bulls or the, um, or the confectionery guys, because they, they're, they're getting far better margins because they have a brand. Um, with this, this point that, um, that the likes of Leanne and Liz are saying about we must, uh, we've got this ability to eat more at home, isn't now the time to have a drive uh, for more fresh produce consumption to actually orchestrate a, a campaign, whether it be for South African produce or global fresh produce, so that more and more people are aware of it and therefore steer away from um, uh, bad things like energy drinks and, and confectionery. Anton, what do you think? Thanks, Max. Yeah, I think um, there might be an opportunity, uh, but I think the challenge would be where, because we have so many different markets so many different consumers, levels of consumers. If you want to do a campaign, one country you need to target the wet market and it might be closed. Other you might target the retailer um, or the end consumer. It depends. Um, our usually, um, the mechanism that we usually use is, is trade shows, the international big trade shows, but I think you're also aware of it that the big one coming up, Asia Food Logistica, has just been moved from September to November. Uh, it's also been moved from Hong Kong to Singapore. Uh, we're still looking at some of the other shows, which will go ahead and which not, because those are the opportunities where you can have, with one effort, reach quite a lot of people, uh, not the consumer, but all the trades people that you can reach there. But, and, and the other thing is to do such a campaign is, again, the funding, um, to get the funding to do that. Um, that is always a challenge, and I think even now, then with COVID, if you if people struggle to get their money, um, I think they you will need a lot of convincing to do to get them to put money towards a campaign if the fruit is still selling. And I think that's what we see: the, the, the fruit is still being consumed. Uh, there is still a demand, 
for the for the fresh produce all over the world that we still see. So long and short, I don't think at this stage it will be worth our while to embark on a campaign. And, and Anton, it may be as again as Liz and Leanne have, have intimated that pe because people are cooking more at home, the consumers coming to the sector anyway. Um, so that might uh, uh, the, the sort of uh, um, pull marketing rather than push marketing. Yeah, correct. There, there is a big campaign locally at the moment, quite interesting. Uh, in South Africa, we have medical aid. Um, we don't have the NHS. And Discovery Health are a medical aid supplier um, that offer discounts for fresh food um, uh, in the form of uh, a, a reduction in your, in, your, in your medical aid premiums. Um, and we've been working with Discovery to offer increased discounts. Um, and there's a big campaign that's going live. I think it's, it went this week and, and it continues um, in the coming months around the, the link of, of the discovery discounts. And, and that can be communicated quite boldly in store and on social media. It really talks to that customer around you know, the importance of health right now and how, how affordable fresh food is a key part of that. So that, that's a big drive that, that we're busy with live kind of today. We're, we're on that one. Fantastic. And Leanne, just coming over to you, if it's okay to, to, to pull on your um, global fresh produce experience, an interesting question then from Walter, Walter about um, air cargo. Um, Justin mentioned about the, uh, the, the issues around the, around the ports, but there's a lot of product that is flown out of uh, South Africa, high value fresh produce. Um, can, Leanne, can you see that um, there's going to be a problem with availability and the cost of high value crops being flown out? Because we, we've already seen some uh, previous examples of, uh, last week we did a, a really interesting webinar on, on the international flower sector. And it turned out that, because most flowers, uh, especially from like some of the East Africa, are air freighted over. And they were getting bumped by PPE, uh, PPE um, supplies being flown out and the uh, flower co air cargo costs uh, accelerating on the on the back of that. What's your views of uh, air cargo and fresh produce out of uh, South Africa, Leanne? I think for, from one of the exporters I spoke to, they've already seen a 50% drop in exporting some of their more, more premium fruits. Um, so they've already been hard hit on that. Um, and with air cargo flights, um, prices doubling, tripling, I think it's going to be a very, very tough time. It, it really depends on um, the markets it's going into and the stimulus package that, that is going to be in the UK or Europe to enable consumers to buy imported fruits um, and, and vegetables in the markets that they, they go into. So, you know, if the, the land price is going to be too high, I think you're going to still see a, a, a drop in supply coming through. And that's going to leave a lot more um, product here in South Africa to be consumed by, by the market here. And then the converse to that is that you're gonna have a lot of people with a lot more restricted income. Um, they're gonna be a lot more thrifty. Um, but look, I, I do see a silver lining. Um, I do think that the trend post COVID is that personal and medical health will remain. Um, the nutritional value of food will be important. And I believe that there will be an upturn in the months to come that people are willing to pay more for premium high nutrient fruit. Um, because as we move through this process, we understand that our personal health and our family health is, is one of the most important things we can have. So I, I sort of feel that a silver lining will come and people will start to pay for more nutrient dense, dense fruit um, in, the, in the months ahead. But it's, it's definitely gonna have an impact on the, the air freight exports out of South Africa. Excellent, Leon, thank you. And, and Justin, there's a, Within the UK, there's a view that we need to start sourcing more um, locally sourced product um, to, to the point that we should not be receiving um, fruit from yourself or South America or, or where. Can you see that as a potential threat for South, South Africa, that countries will be looking to source more product locally? Yeah, I think that's always a, a threat. You know, there have been a lot of these local buying um, campaigns in the past. And uh, so one, one must take... Uh, cognizance of, of these trends, um, one can't ignore them. Um, you know, if you look at citrus as a product, they, they, they're locally grown citrus when, when we're exporting. So, um, you know, we, we don't compete against locally grown citrus, and we always have competed against locally grown melons and, and other um, summer fruit in, in, in the UK and in Europe. And, and that will continue, but you know, con consumers do like variety in their diets, and 
Uh, and so I think there will always be a place for imported citrus. Um, uh, you know, if you look at the volumes of citrus purchased uh, in the European winter versus European summer, summer is very much lower than the winter. Got it, Justin, thank you. And Anton, really interesting question in from Sabrina. What is the split in terms of fresh produce exported to neighboring African countries compared to other international export destinations, i.e. deep sea air freight and premium exported produce versus road transport to Southern Africa? Any thoughts on that, please? I think firstly, just linking onto the question on, on, on uh, air transport, I don't know if you can see all this now, um, on flight radar, you see two flights from South Africa currently. This was just a minute ago. So the availability of, of flights um, to export anything by air is almost zero at this stage. You've got one flight from Emirates arriving now in Johannesburg. Um, they try and combine them to use their passenger aircraft sometimes for, for freight. But yes, the, in terms of the split, uh, about 5% of all the fresh produce exported go into Africa from South Africa. Um, but if I say that, I must also add that about 30% of all our apple exports go into Africa and to West Africa. The majority of the fruit, about, I would say more than 90% goes by sea because of the, the high cost of air freight. We just spoke about that. Uh, and then the, the challenge with the uh, trans-border uh, freight road by road in, in Southern Africa, the logistics, we've seen that some of the border post queues kilometers long with trucks uh, trying to, to cross the borders all the formalities all the documentation everything um, yes so the majority still goes by sea um, and the majority of, of the exports still to the UK and, and the EU. I, I think you all have to be congratulated in the respect of we've all gone through the, this mind-changing period over the last we're on uh, our 50th day of, uh, of lockdown and I'm so impressed with how South African fresh produce has got over these uh, these initial hurdles and it feels like we've gone through the shock we're into the normality of it what about the success how can South Africa create success in the in the long term and, and to, to use Liz's great comment never waste a crisis Clayton how do you think your sector within within grapes within Sati can create success for the long term for South African grapes. Well, uh, one thing you must know about South Africans is we absolutely thrive in a crisis. We almost some say in permanent crisis mode. So, like I said, from drought to other challenges. So it's it's kind of uh, normal for us. But certainly, I think um, it's involving the the agricultural employees, agricultural workers. You know, giving them more share working with them, growing value together. And then obviously from a, a government side, the, those public, public private partnerships, unlocking um, you know, opportunities, getting the value chain moving and so on. Yeah. Well done. Justin, how are you going to create success for South African Citrus ongoing? Yeah, so our COVID committee decided we want to come out as an industry stronger than when we went in. Um, and as you know, as Clayton said, uh, uh, growers are very resilient people. Um, so I think one of the things is using technology, definitely like these Zoom calls, all these meetings we fly around to, to, to attend, we can actually do them a lot more efficiently by using technology in the future. The other important thing is our, our um, interaction with government. We've got very much close to government in this crisis and they've been fantastic in helping our sector to actually keep moving um, uh, during the lockdown. So we really appreciate that. And the importance of the workers is really coming out strongly um, and the people, the people in our business uh, have come to the fore and, and their, their value is being recognized. Um, and then the, the, the links between agriculture and all the other sectors in the economy are, are very much evident now. And the importance of those interlinks um, is becoming evident and, and they're, they're beginning stronger. So I really believe we can come, come out stronger at the end of this. Wow, what, what a fantastic attitude, thank you. Leanne, so you started us off with some pretty big figures as a number of people have been commentating. What, be sanguine with us. What's your view? Do you, do you think there, there will be a success for South Africa from this? Um, absolutely. I think, um, you know, it, South Africa has incredible growers. We have an incredible um, supply structure. I think um, food generally is going to be, be more important globally. 
um, and, and people need to eat and they need to eat healthier food. I think that that's one of the big things that are, is going to come through. What I think will change quite a lot in South Africa is, is the channels and, and how the, the industry will adapt and change and collaborate. So, um, you know, we already see um, all the retailers changing their, their MOs pretty quickly on how they service their consumers. But also, I think being more authentic and looking at the, the care of everyone in South Africa, I think are, are lovely things that are coming out. And also I think the, the way that produce is distributed through South Africa is gonna become more accessible in a, in a different way through um, home deliveries, um, spaza stores, and mobile spaza stores from retailers. I believe there's gonna be a lot more businesses diversifying and being able to de deliver fresh produce into um, into the different channels like townships, probably where it's been a lot more restricted in the past. Leanne, well done. Anton, which country grows the, uh, the world's best fresh produce? <laughs> the guy in South Africa. <laughs> With all our uh, good quality oh. checks and everything in there. It's our <laughs> brilliant farmers. <laughs> Maybe adding on to what Clayton has said, you know, South Africans tend to run towards a problem, not away from it. Run yeah. towards it and find a solution. I think that is this whole COVID-19. Uh, we'll come out of that, I think, just reconfirming and reaffirming that this industry is a people industry and it's a mission-driven industry. Fantastic, Anton. Liz, I'm just going to reiterate it again. You've got this fantastic background of both the UK and South Africa. So you've seen some sites in, in, in retail. Everyone else has been very positive, very optimistic. Are you as positive as you are? You are as optimistic about uh, South African retail, about South African fresh produce. Yeah, I, absolutely. Like uh, to echo everybody's views, you know, we are um, a, a super resilient people who um, are absolutely up for this challenge. And I think we're really clear that we, you know, we can and we will come out of it stronger. Um, there are exciting opportunities like new markets and you know, understanding a new customer demand. Um, from our side, the kind of, I guess, more serious conversations are, um, the reality is um, we, we have to run a, a super lean business to be able to satisfy the customer's demand on price. Um, and so uh, the work that we're busy with at the moment is really to scrutinize the value chain. Um, where are we adding unnecessary costs? Historically, we may have been able to to weather. Um, we're just not going to be able to in, in the coming months. Um, so it's really about honing that retail skill now, um, challenging all the costs, um, and 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 really reviewing you know what what is the most sustainable model um, uh, that that certainly means we can um, pay the farmers what we should be continuing to pay the farmers, but perhaps looking at the retail chain on on how can we can take costs out there so that we can service the customer um, with, a, with a much more a value oriented offer. Um, but we, we, we're excited by it. Um, I've learned more in the last three months than I've learned in, in, in the last 17 years. And I think if we remain hungry and we remain humble, um, we will achieve and we will succeed. Um, and we have, we have a real sense of purpose in doing that. Um, the industry employs a lot of people um, whether it be in in our shops or in our on our farms, um, and so I think as as leaders in in the industry, we really see that as a sense of purpose um, and a sense of responsibility. And and from there, we we work all hours and we are hundred percent dedicated. So Fantastic. exciting times ahead. Well done, Liz. And, and, and guys, so just getting to the, the wrap up stage, I was obviously being slightly sarcastic to Anton about who, who grows the fresh, pr fresh produce in the, in the world, because everyone knows it's South Africa. This is when, when I, I'm going to get uh, um, a, a shot at by all, all my colleagues within, within the UK. But, but on a serious note, if we could just wrap up with, uh, with views, comments from each of you individually, in the respect of the, fresh produce as a global community. So your views on how people can create success on a global ba basis for fresh produce, for people to get excited about eating and consuming more fresh produce um, as we pass through this, uh, this COVID-19 situation in, in a positive manner, just to have your views as to how people can create success would be, would be amazing. Leanne, can we start with you, please? Okay, so I, I think one of the calls that I would say is to to everyone within the industry, sort of start getting behind your trade associations um, in your countries. 
um, or in your country um, and sort of collectively join forces to try and start making a communication movement to your consumers. You know, if we don't start somewhere and we always say it's someone else's problem, it's never going to happen. And it's everyone's responsibility in the chain to stand up and sort of be part of it to make a contribution. And then I think we can have a collective effort to communicate the value of fresh produce to our consumers. Liam, well, well done. And that's one of the fundamental reasons why we set up Beanstalk to be able to do yeah. that. Just look at this, this little one hour webinar. We've got uh, 500, 600 people di dialed in on an international basis just so we can create that communication. Yeah. Justin, what's your, what's your view, please? Yeah, if I can just give a pun to the global as, um, citrus organization. I think as, 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 uh, um, as sectors, we need to stand together globally. You know, uh, you see a lot in the press about this country about that country and it really doesn't help the sector um, we've got a, a fantastic product and, and if all of us around the world work together we can get more consumers to consume our product so I, I firmly believe that a closer relationship with all the, the citrus uh, producing countries and their people around the world does help in, in, in promoting the sector and then uh, the other thing in terms of, of, of what's been happening and, and, and Anton alluded to it was donations. I'm blown away by the generosity of, of farmers around South Africa who have just uh, uh, gone around and got product and, and gone into communities and, and, and fed the poor and, and the people that are really suffering under these conditions. And it just shows a, a strength of community which I hope we take forward after, the, after this crisis. Justin, thank you. Clayton? Well, in the African idiom, it takes a village to raise a child. So as a global village in the fresh produce, we all have to promote the sector, you know, make sure people eat it, consume it, it's shipped properly on time and the retailers, you know, stock it as much as possible. And this is why I love Clayton. Liz, to wrap up from you. Um, we, we are in essential services we spoke about earlier um, and uh, customer demand is there. Um, and so I really think um, biggest learning for me f from this is, is really understand the customer, um, uh, the answers there. Um, so the customer will be very clearly uh, clear with you what, what they want um, listen to them. They are the reason we are all in this industry um, and, and, and the answers are there. Um, but, but personally, I would say just to keep the optimism, uh, I think we all chose produce um, because we love it. You have to love it, otherwise you would be too mad to not <laughs> to work in this industry. Um, and so really just to hone that love and understand that there's there's a big sense of purpose around what we're doing every day. And, and, and from there, we just go from strength to strength. Anton. Yes, I think the two things, uh, the one relationships, I think it's been reconfirmed the importance of that relationship between your, your exporter and, and the supplier, the exporter and the client, exporter and government and other uh, bodies, and then link to the relationship is communication. Open, honest communication as quickly as soon as possible on all issues, then link to all these relationships. So relationship and communication. Excellent. Max, uh, Max, can I come in? Uh, I, I know you're wrapping up, but I just want to thank you for this opportunity to showcase South Africa and our products. Um, you've done a great amount of good for, for the fresh produce sector, and we really appreciate it. No, no problem. As long as, you're, as long as you're happy to pick me up off my motorbike when I fall at your doorstep again, Justin, that would be, be much appreciated. So to everyone, just to say thank you very much to our sponsors. Uh, we wouldn't be able to uh, run this if it wasn't for the, their assistance. And um, also just to, to remind everyone that we've got this uh, great webinar uh, that we're doing jointly with the British Apples and Pears next Tuesday, the 19th um, at uh, 2 p.m., 1400 hours uh, BST time. So just before we wrap up, I'm just trying to think of the best way of doing this. Could all the panelists put both hands up in the air if you love South African fresh produce? Yay, fantastic. Everyone, thank you very much. Keep safe. We love South Africa. Keep safe, everyone. And we'll see you very shortly. Bye-bye.